Back with another one, man. We got our uh, 2010 Ford F-150 front brakes and rotors. A lot of uh, tools and parts. Uh, we're going to start off using a 19 millimeter to get those lug nuts off. Socket or four-way. Of course, we got our jack and our jack stand. Excuse my jack stand not being fully applied, but I definitely did. And later on, just you just don't see it. But yeah, we're going to spin those, I want to say, what, it was like six or, there's usually like six or eight lug nuts off of there. Let me see, six, yeah, that's six, okay. 13 millimeter socket to grab those two bolts holding in place the brake caliber. And uh, those are 13. And you just want to break those both loose. Either break a bar or regular ratchet, just depending on how long and how stuck they're in there. And simply take them out, put them somewhere, you'll find them. Um, I used a mini pry bar to get the um, brake caliber off. It was just easier that way. And I set it kind of ever so slightly right there without disturbing that brake line. And I was able to kind of mount it there. Um, you can use a flathead to get the old brakes off. I did, because I know I'm not using the old rotors. So, for some people, you might want to use something different, because the uh, flathead may mess up the rotors. It may not, just depending on how you use it. But that's something I definitely use when I'm doing the rotors. Uh, another thing, too, he ordered the brakes from online. Sometimes they don't have the retaining clips that go into the brake caliper bracket. So you can definitely clean the clips um, with a steel brush or, or a bronze brush and um, just kind of get them back to factory and then grease them up when you're done. 21 millimeter socket to break off the caliper bracket so we can release those that rotor. And also the rotor has that, that green retaining clip on the front and it's easy to take off with a flat head. Um, sorry, I skipped that part, but that part is super easy. And you can see I'm struggling a little bit to adjust my adjustable breaker bar. More longer it is, the lever more leverage you got. And another thing too, I'm literally not in a good safety spot. But I said this in a previous video. This is just my method, and especially when you have a jack stand under the vehicle um, and the e-brake on, it's kind of hard for it to fall on you. Um, so I got those two loose 21 millimeter, millimeter sockets and I'm gonna ratchet off the 21 millimeter bolts. And then this is for the bracket um, that holds the ro rotor onto the, to the uh, hub. Okay, now we got both of those bolts out of there. Um, we're ready to move on to taking off the rotor. Now, sometimes rotors, especially on Ford, they usually come off um, with a little bit of force uh, using a, either a rubber mallet or like, a, like in my case, if you're using, if you're getting new rotors, then you can use a steel hammer, especially with bigger trucks. The older they are too, just makes a difference so as you see I'm holding on to the rotor just in case the vibration doesn't make it fall and then I'm able to slide it off I'm gonna add the new rotor back on line it up accordingly and then what I didn't know but you can also put it on there and put that green retaining clip on the front that's what holds in the rotor so you don't have to fumble and play with it um, but I decided not to do it. I decided to do it the hard way, but that's why I'm doing it. So you, you don't have to struggle. But yeah, if you just re-add that retaining clip, then you'll be able to get it on there easier. Now, in some cases, your, your vehicle may not come with a retaining clip, but, and you have to struggle like this. So this is another method as well. Not all vehicles, not all Ford trucks have that.
but it would have been helpful if I used it. So yeah, I'm just gonna line the bracket back up, apply the bolts back in, reverse process, retighten them. It is a struggle because the rotor's loose. Um, as soon as you get a good, nice, firm fit, tighten it up by hand, and then after that with the ratchet. And then I don't have a um, a uh, Torx socket or wrench, so I don't know the Torx specs on these bolts. I just simply use the same amount of force I use to take it off to uh, put it back on. And that's just basically the best way I found out. But it is recommended to get a Torx wrench and look up the Torx specs so the bolts are correctly torqued. Now we're going to compress the compressor. As you see, I still have it kind of mounted. Now I'm more so on the bracket to get a better um, view. And uh, it's kind of it's gonna slide, so I'm I'm just going with the flow. Um, and in this case, you want to use a different uh, compressor C clamp that I'm using because this one's a dual compressor or caliper. I'm sorry, and it's hard to do it because there's no really middle part, and you want to compress them both at the same time. So you'll probably have to compress one each side and then compress it together at the end. After you're done doing that, reapply the brakes. Very simple process. And then you're gonna apply your brake compressor compressed fully um, to the brakes. Make sure your bushings are in line. And then add the bolt back. And uh, in, in this video, I didn't show me applying brake grease, but you always want to apply brake grease. And I do have brake grease on those brakes. I just didn't have it there. This is a customer's vehicle, and they had to go to AutoZone to buy some. But for video purposes, i uh, just sh just showing you how to reapply it. And after that, that's completely done. Also, don't forget that green 